Wise men still seek him. Matthew chapter 2, 1 to 18. The media and the malls like nothing more than freezing Christ out of Christmas. It is a culture war. Like liberal bias and a left wing agenda, no one likes to admit. How did the Magi or wise men celebrate Christmas? What do the wise today need to know about the Christ, past and present? What did Christ bring at His coming, and what did the wise men offer in return? Number 1. Wisdom is in the going, not in the guessing. Matthew 2, 1-2 the wise men who paid homage to Christ at his birth were missionaries. Evangelists, scholars, philosophers, sages, dreamers, and seekers. The men were wise because they made the move, act in faith, and sought the child. The idea of making the trip was so inconceivable and inconvenient for most people, but the wise men decided that this was the adventure and the opportunity of a lifetime. So they crossed deserts, braved storms, and suffered winds to see the sight. The start did not act like a tour guide until after they arrived in Jerusalem in verse 9. The foreigners knew something the locals did not. The birth of a king of the Jews. Jesus was not any mere king. He was king of Jews. Verse 2. He was born king and Jews. Verse 2. Not appointed or voted king of the Jews. David was the past king. Matthew 1 6 and Herod the present king verse 3 but Jesus was permanent king because he was the one born king he is king of a people the Jews not a state or government number two wisdom is in the greeting not in the gazing Matthew 2 9 to 10 the Magi's response was not just joy or great joy, but the Greek version, exceeding great joy, or overjoyed, verse 10. The wise men were more than merely excited and enthusiastic. They were ecstatic, euphoric, and exhilarated, rubbing their eyes at the start that dramatically applied the bricks, pitching themselves to see if it was real and prancing around pretty much like kids. They could not believe their eyes and the sight. The light at the end of the tunnel and the treasure at the end of the rainbow. The book of Matthew is the gospel of worship. The other gospel each recorded only one instant Jesus was worshipped. Mark 5, 6, Luke 24, 52, John 9, 38. But in Matthew's gospels, the people worshipped Jesus nine times. Matthew 2, 2, 11, 8, 2, 9, 18. 14, 33, 15, 25, 20, 20, 28, 9, and 17. The Magi were not there to cuddle the baby, hold a party, or become the news. The only thing missing so far at Jesus' birth was worship, which the Magi were happy to supply or provide. Number 3. Wisdom is in the giving, not in the getting. Matthew 
Chapter 2, 11 The Magi brought to Jesus and his family timely gifts, quantity and quality wise. In contrast to the poor shepherds, the wise men brought gold with them. Overcoming the fears of themselves, bandits or thugs along the way. In those days, people took with them cash and not personal check, credit card, or cashier check. A heavily accent foreigner with gold on him or her was an easy parry too good to be true. A small group of foreigners was no security at all. Gold was the most prized and costly material possession at that time, and probably even now too. Frankincense, on the other hand, is integral to worship and offerings. It is holy to the Lord. Exodus chapter 30, 34-37 an aroma pleasing to the Lord when using as grain offering. Leviticus chapter 2, 1 to 2, chapter 6, 15. Myrrh is more associated with beauty and love. Esther chapter 2, 12, Proverbs chapter 7, 17. Specifically in the Song and Solomon where myrrh is essential to lovers. Song, chapter 1, 13, 4, 6 to 7, chapter 4, 13 to 14, chapter 5, 1, and 5, and 13. Conclusion Jesus is worthy of our worship. He is God became man. He was the rich, yet for your sake he became poor. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 9 Exchanging his majesty and magnificence for meekness and morality, his supremacy and sovereignty for scorn and sufferings, his divinity and dominion for danger and death. Won't you worship him on bent knees and welcome him into your heart right now?